Welcome, everybody, to another edition of I'll Hang Up and Listen, brought to you by Outlet Liquor. Don't haste, go pick up a case. The more you buy, the more you save. Outlet Liquor, what's your outlet? And, of course, uh, Amherst Ale House. Uh, make sure you get over there for the rest of the season. Sabres games, half off. Uh, pitchers of Blue, Blue Light, Coors, Molson, the whole nine yards. And not to mention half off medium pepperoni pizzas. Uh, again, for all Sabres games. Get over to Amherst Ale House, unbelievable food. And don't forget manscaped.com. Use code word trainwreck, T R A I N W R E C K. Get you 20% off plus free shipping. That's all capital letters trainwreck, T R A I N W R E C K. Code word trainwreck, 20% off plus free shipping. Get yourself the lawnmower of 3.0, unbelievable razor. Keep your, yeah, you know, I know I'm I'm well overdue for a shave, but has a built-in flashlight that helps you with your edging, waterproof in case you're uh running late, got a sh- got a got a shave in the shower, waterproof, unbelievable technology. I love the uh, the three the uh the uh lawnmower 3.0. Great piece of technology over there from manscaped.com. All right, now that we got all the ad stuff out of the way, uh Sabres drop one tonight, six to three. Not their best efforts, especially there in the first period, guys. Um, you know, very, very lackluster uh, um, in, the, in that first period. They caught caught on their heels quite often. Uh, Victor Olofsson said it best probably uh, in the post game that it was, you know, they were just, you know, playing hesitant. They were, you know, backing into their own zone with the puck quite often. They were giving, you know, free opportunities to the Rangers for them. I mean, look at the bandage ad, you know, pretty much – close to a natural hat trick tonight. I don't think he had the natural. No, 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 he didn't know. Kako uh, had one in there in the first four. So, um, you know, again, this, the, the, the players that you want to see score for the Rangers, they scored tonight. Zabanajad had three. Um, Zabanajad had three. You had uh, Kako with another, Lafreniere with one. Um, it, it, it wasn't the best effort in the first half of the game, but the Sabres kept themselves in the game tonight. Um, you know, Sam Reinhart continues to prove that he can be a, uh, a you know, a, a play center uh, for this team going forward. I think it'd be a huge mistake to put him back on the wing, especially when this team has lacked center depth, uh, even before Ryan O'Reilly was here. So uh, obviously we're joined by Ty B. How you doing, man? I know you were watching the game. Uh, what, what were your opinions? Yeah, I mean, I, I think when you look at this game, it's it's a tale of two different teams right now. The Sabres, you know, you're you're out here, you're playing, you got these young guys who want to make a name for themselves, but what do they really have to play for? It's just their pride. Whereas the Rangers are surging right now, they have a chance still to catch the Boston Bruins to get into that final playoff position. And if you look at the numbers, they have a 30, they're like plus 30 goal differential, Boston's only plus 18 the rangers have scored like 33 34 more goals than the bruins all season long i think the rangers could do it and if these young guys like capo caco can really figure things out going into the playoffs and into this this stretch here like they could get themselves into the playoffs and if they do they could be a very scary team doing absolutely and you know what the rangers uh and they mentioned it during the broadcast sabanaje was a 40 goal scorer last season and he's really caught fire the last month Think about um, when he got hot last year, right pardon? before right before the uh, COVID stop. Like he was literally the hottest player in the league. Like what? Do you oh do? yeah, five goal night. Like he was going berserk, and he's doing it again here, right in the stretch. Like he's yep. peaking at the right time for this team, and that that hat trick, you know, like just goes to show where he is right now with his game. Yeah, you know, it's fun to watch players like him play him. Uh, you know, Panarin. You know, the bread man. You know, always cooking there on the power play. You know, I just, you know, it, the lack of production uh, on the power play too. I know they have, they've had goals in the last two games mm-hmm. on the power play, but you know, the lack of production on the power play just shows how much you miss a guy like Jack Eichel. You know, that's why Victor Olsson is as dangerous as he is on that far side, you know, on uh, along the wall, because you have that threat of Jack Eichel on the opposite side. So who are you going to, who are you going to gravitate more? Eichel, one of the top players in the world or possibly one of the best power play players in the game right now. And Victor Olofsson, one of the most deadly shots in the game, you know, that's why Victor was so dangerous, you know, last year, it, because you had the threat of Eichel on that upside. Now that you don't, p- players tend to gravitate more to him. Uh, it just kind of sucks, you know, but again, it's, it, it's, like you said, it's the tale of two teams. 
Um, you have a team that's really pushing hard for a playoff spot right now and a team, again, that doesn't have much to play for. But it has been fun to watch. I've had a lot of fun watching this team since Granado's taken over. And uh, Donnie Meatballs is really making it hard for the Bakulas not to hire him as the next head coach. Yeah, and uh, I think, you know, that's a, that's the big thing. Is like he's continuing to make his case because the team, even when, you know, they get behind and things like that, they're not completely out of games. They still continue to show some energy, some heart, some push, um, you know, whatever word you want to use. They're just not dead. Um, and under Ralph Kruger, you know, they let up a goal or two early and they were absolutely lost. Or they'd play, you know, a period or two well and then they give up on themselves. they'd be gone. And, you know, we're, we're seeing a more complete game. You know, it's not necessarily the best every 60 minutes, but the effort at least is there. Absolutely. And it's just, an um, too. we're not seeing the same mistakes made over and over again. No. And the biggest difference, and I've said this a few times between Granado and Ralph Kruger is just the fact that once they get down early, you could just see it in their body language and just the way, how timid they look out there that they're out of it. The game's over. Like, it could only be two nothing under for Ralph Kruger, and you could tell it's like there is no way this team is fighting back into this game. There was just no possible way. Yeah. And I think tonight too. I think goaltending killed you a little bit. Uh, Takarski gave him a real uh, a muffin. Yeah. Uh, does it, I think it's the 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 the, the third goal by Zabanajad uh, came in wide. Um, he was on his post. He just snuck yeah, it in. The, quote, the quote right now from Don Granado. I just just got the. Reading in the tweet because he's he's live with his press conference yeah, right, now. right now. Too. Yeah, he put he put a lot of thought uh, into making the move when he took out Takarski with some consultation with the goaltender coach. So they must have saw something in his game being off today. Um, you know, which it happens. You know, once in a while, it's a big mental game like we talk about all the time, Dwayne. Oh, yeah. Sometimes you might just not be there fully, or you're just a step behind. And sometimes it's better to take him out than to subject him to just getting lit up because then it's going to destroy his confidence even worse, possibly. Yeah, and you know what? I hope I, – I obviously, I don't think we'll see, you know, Dustin Tokarski on this on this team next year as a backup goaltender. No way. Um, if Kevin Adams is, you know, doing going to do his job, he's not going to bring back Dustin Tokarski to be your backup. Uh, but I do hope that in this last stretch of games that he plays well enough to f possibly get a look at from another team. Um, I'm not sure what his contract looks like if it was just this one season. It was probably a one or two year deal. For yeah, him. I think it was. I want to say it was just this season. Maybe somebody in the comments, you know, or somebody that's watching along can get us that information real quick. But it's, you know, I hope he plays well enough to get looked at by our team because it was a nice story this season. And the thing with his dad back, the, him, him getting his first win with Buffalo. Yeah. It was the first win since his dad passed away. And that was a really nice moment for him. Long time Mo between like NHL starts and everything. Yep. Yep, and, and yeah, I, I definitely just wish the best for the guy. He seems like, you know, he's a really good locker room guy. He's a good teammate. And, you know, every time people talk about him on the team, any, uh, any guy always has good things to say about him. So I hope he, you know, gets a look at from another team, at least at least a minor league contract somewhere that his career isn't over here after Buffalo. But that is something they need to address, you know, again, going on to another year. Oh, so so Tukarski's probably going to be your AHL goalie next season. You know, he's going to be in, in Rochester. So that makes me happy, at least at least that, you know, he'll he'll have another opportunity in Rochester next season to keep his career going. But that, again, going back, this has been an ongoing issue with this franchise. You have to address that backup position, um, whether you do it in free, in, free agency or trade. Um, I don't think UPL, I mean, I, I'm not comfortable putting him in that position not quite yet. No, um, those numbers aren't there. No, they're not. I mean, granted, I mean, it's been bad. I mean, bad in Rochester. Like, yeah, there's no it, players voting it. Like, he's had an make, 888 save percentage this year. Don't make that. Don't make that mistake. Uh, don't do not make that mistake the next season. Um, I doubt there will be a, a situation where you'll have him on a taxi squad. I, 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 I can't see the taxi squad being a thing next season. So with that being said, just leave him in Rochester and find a veteran guy, a guy like a Brian Elliott, you know, a guy who's dominated Buffalo for the most, most of all, all of his career. Uh, you know, a guy like Brian Elliott who can really sit behind Linus Olmark. If the, we don't even know if Linus Olmark is going to be a saber next year, we, we, we really don't even know that. So we may need a starting and a backup goalie for oh, all. Uh, Dwayne, don't even get me started on that. There's a yeah, lot. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, but you know, those are things that need to be addressed and, that should be priority number one and two uh, this offseason for Kevin Adams, figuring that out. That's no, my God. No. I, like, I don't want to leave him up here, you know, putting too much onto him. 
too early or even doing that in Rochester. Like that's why it's a good thing having Tokarski where he can still split because yeah, like UPL's numbers are just not living up to what they need to be um, to be a professional goalie. <laughs> I mean, he, he did all right in the ECHL, but um, ever since, you know, he's come off that injury, obviously it, it takes a while. It's not an easy thing to come back from. And is it slowing his movement that much or is he just having some other issues or, you know, what have you, but you don't want to put the full pressure of being this team's NHL goalie right now. No, absolutely not. It's even, even the backup next year. It, it's, it, I just don't, I, I don't want to rush. Everybody knows, you know, who follows this game as much as I do just knows that, that two, the two positions that take the longest to develop are uh, goaltending and defenseman. Um, mm-hmm. you, you, you can, you can take a Jack Quinn and throw him in the NHL maybe a little bit earlier than, than need be. And, he'll be able to find his way quicker than a goaltender or maybe, you know, you don't want to ruin a goalie's confidence at the age of a guy like UPL, uh, you know, this early in his career, cause he's, there's a good chance he might not get that swagger back. And I just don't want to put him in that position. I don't, I want to let him sit and simmer in Rochester for at least one more season. Let, let him do it. Him with him, what you did with Ryan Miller, because Ryan Miller didn't come into the league until I think he was like 25 or 26 years old. And the guy came in and was impactful almost immediately. You know, he came in at, uh, as a starting role, had a, Mar- a guy like Marty Baran as, as the backup. Yeah. And it was just a great one-two punch for Buffalo for the longest time until you traded Marty to uh, Philly at the deadline. Uh, you got to go find those guys available. You had the opportunity that's past uh, off season of free agency and you didn't address it, which I think Kevin Adams is really kicking himself for, but you really have to address that this off season. Yeah. And I think great point here from Sabres lover. Same thing with Matias Samuelson. We're seeing the flashes. Like he looks, you know, pretty decent, but being so able to play, you know, a full 82 game season up here, like he's still not there. Like uh, he's making those mistakes at, at times. And to have that pressure on him right now, after, you know, I think this is his first actual season in Rochester, full season because of uh, COVID and everything. So yep. um, obviously it's a, it's a big adjustment. And it was probably an earlier call up than he maybe even expected. Yeah, I don't even think he expected it to be honest with, with you. injuries and everything else. I'd rather them bring up Matias Samuelson, let him at least see a few games up here though, than some of the other retread um, names. So uh, I think it's nice to see them playing the young guys. And I think, you know, everyone was hoping maybe Jack Quinn would get a few games, but obviously he's being uh, the hernia surgery. Yeah. yeah. I, uh, again, I just, I think that, you uh, even Jacob Bryson. I don't know if he was really expecting to get the call up this early in his career, but again, you know, he hasn't played terrible. Even though he, you know, he tried to throw that puck up the middle of the ice uh, in the second period and almost gave up uh, a goal. I think I might have, it might have been right to Zabanajad. I'm not sure. Is it Zabanajad or it was Lafreniere threw the puck from number one rule of defenseman: never ice the puck up the middle from behind your own net. Throws a muffin right up a beach ball right up the middle of the ice from behind the net caught you know tipped by i think lafreniere went off to Carsey's glove and out of play but you know these young kids they've come in and they've performed well and it, you know it makes my hopes high for the future mm-hmm. for the way this core of young players is performing right now in a very tough situation and you know again you don't have eichel you know i know mccabe's a ufa but i really do believe that mccabe is a guy who takes his leadership role with this team you know, he takes a lot of pride in that. He takes pride in wearing a letter. I think McKay will be back. Um, and I think this might be the off season too, Ty, where you, you could see a wrist align and get in traded, especially with the, 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 uh, the, the expansion draft looming. And you saw the kind of deals that went down with Vegas trades being made to protect yeah. certain players, or maybe to take on bad contracts. Could this be the season where you do see wrist align and get traded? I mean, I, I think it should be. I mean, we, we've seen enough to know that he's not a good defenseman. Like, I mean, you can't you can't make that argument like that he's good. Like, um, it seems like it was Jake McCabe that was um, improving his numbers because he's been absolutely awful since he hasn't been with McCabe. Yep. And, you know, if you can get another team to take him for the amount of money he's being paid, you do that because you can fulfill his role with guys with cheaper contracts to perform just as well, if not better. I agree. Um, you know, and again, you're coming into another off season, a free agency where you're going to see similar contracts being signed to the last free agency where you're going to see talented players take less money because that's just the, 
the the world right now and the sport they're playing and where you know co- big contracts probably aren't going to be handed out in free agency because the, <laughs> the league made no money this year essentially like they they lost a ton of money so there isn't going to be the opportunity for teams to be handing out huge contracts they're going to be trying to stay under the cap so you know if you blueprint what kind of what Florida did this offseason sign talented players on one to two year deals like again I, I keep saying their names Carter Verhage and Anthony Duclair Cumulatively, they make two point seven million dollars this season, which is bananas to me. Um, you know, if you, if you make moves like that, you give these young kids time to develop more, and you you know bring in some vet some veterans that they can you know k- kind of learn from on and off the ice, and, and you and, and you and you give them more time to develop, and you're not rushing them and putting them in situations that they might not be ready for, um, and that's just going to help their game and. I'm not going to sit here and say the Sabres are going to be fighting for a playoff spot next season, but I think the overall consensus this team is five years away. I don't think so. I think if Jack Eichel is back, which I don't see why he wouldn't be, and you keep Sam Reinhardt at center, and you're looking at some insanely good center ice depth, you know, something they haven't had since the days of Breer and Jury. And that is possibly, in my opinion, the most crucial thing to address outside of goaltending. Uh, on any team is make sure you dev depth down the middle and that next season again if you decide to keep Sam at center which Granado has hinted at that you could be looking at the best some of the best center ice depth uh this again this team has seen in years yep absolutely we got uh Suffolk Babers what do you think about a Darlene contract this is going to be interesting because it depends if you're looking at linking him up on a long-term deal I don't know if they're ready to give him that. I think you probably give him a year or two bridge and then you're looking to give him that long-term one. I don't know if he's really earned that big ticket yet. Not in my mind. I think it comes in, you know, maybe one, two years around four and a half, five million. And then you go from there. I, I, I personally, I don't know if Darlene's camp would want only a one or two year deal. I mean, I'm not going to speak for the guy, but you're going long-term though. You're not getting, at Darlene's output, you're not getting more than seven or eight million. You shouldn't, at least. I'd be willing to pay him. I mean, if he, he see again, he seems like the type of kid. Yeah, you're motivated by my. Again, I don't know the kid. I don't know his agent. He seems like the type of kid that you know. Loyalty might mean something to him. Um, I remember his a lot of his rhetoric early on. As you know, as an 18, 19 year old, you know, I know was people. A lot of people crack jokes, and I was like. I wouldn't want to play. I would. I'd play anywhere, anywhere but Toronto. He took the whole Buffalo, Toronto thing pretty seriously. Yeah. He seems to the type of kid where money isn't, you know, the motivator for everything. He wants to win. Um, not saying that Buffalo is the place that wants to win, but I think that again, loyalty might mean something to him. And I think he would take, and his agent would say yes to maybe a six to se- six year deal, maybe worth seven or eight million. And I would say yes to that too in a heartbeat. If I mean, if you can get him for that, that. <sighs> Hey, remember Nathan McKinnon's contract? I thought he was worth a hell of a lot more than what he signed. Yeah, for. like <laughs> that's the thing is like if they're willing to take a long term deal for that amount now, I think you probably do it. Betting on Darlene to continue to progress and like play the way he has under Granado as opposed to Ralph Kruger. But like if you're just basing it off of his performance thus far, like he's not worth that much. You're it, predicting that he will be though. Bet. Yeah. Because I think he will be. I think you know once once the the short I, leash. I, you, I haven't soured on him, but it's just when the numbers aren't there, like they're going to come to that, like come to the table and 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 show you the numbers. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I mean, you can also show his camp can also show you the numbers of guys like Victor Hedman, uh, their first five years in the league, and say, well, you can say that all you want, but Victor Hedman is one of the best. Any yeah, and you league. say we'll pay you the bridge just like Hedman got. Yeah. I, I agree. I, I agree. I'm not. I'm not disagreeing. I just think if, if if you're if you're Kevin Adams and if you have an opportunity to lock a guy like up and his camp is willing to agree to something like that, and you can get him at like a, you know, anywhere a six million dollar deal, six to seven for six years. I think you sign that in a heartbeat because I think he'll be absolutely worth every penny three years from now. Yeah, I mean, you never know how it's going to play out, Dwayne. Like that's the thing, and like. I'm I'm excited to see it because it's gonna it's really gonna set sort of the path of what you can do long term now that you have uh you know your cornerstone center and potentially the cornerstone defenseman locked up for long term. Mm-hmm. We'll see. We'll see what they do. 
Yeah, I already, he's also got incredible chemistry with Yoki Harju. That could be a factor. I agree. Uh, you know, Joker definitely does drive me nuts sometimes, but the chemistry he does have with Darlene that seems to be working. That could be like a, a pairing you see long term here down the down the road. Agree with that. So, um, I, you know, I I got nothing left. You know, that's just a game that I'll hang up and listen. Yeah, I'll hang up and listen. It was a team that was hungrier. Now, I don't want to say hungrier than us. They just have something to play for, and you know, they're more talented. They just are. You know, you have a couple. Hey, first I, I just said this to Dom. They quickly passed us on their rebuild. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're, they're well, like, you know, getting gifted Alexis, Alexi Lafreniere for no reason as when they won the draft lottery, when they think they were a play, they made the play in, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Getting gifted Lafreniere at the draft lottery, that helped a lot too. <laughs> you know, so it doesn't hurt. No, uh, definitely didn't hurt. Not all that great either. So. Huh? He hasn't been all that great either. No, so. no, he hasn't. He, that was, uh, that's another thing I was seeing myself watching this game. He was hyped up a lot, a lot going into that draft. He was hyped up to be the next, like, you know, the the best uh, best player to go first overall since McDavid. Where are those comparisons? Because he does not look like – I'm not saying he's not going to be a good hockey player. I think he'll be – I think he will be great. But he was being called generational coming into that draft. I'm just like, I don't see it. I just don't, I, you know, McDavid, you know, both McDavid and Eichel, you know, in their own respects, when they both came into the league, man, they were, they were an immediate impact. Like they, they, they were, they were, they, they were affecting their team positively almost immediately. Whereas Lafreniere, it took him like what, eight or nine games to score his first goal in the NHL. And he hasn't, I mean, his game has gotten better. He's got like a handful of goals all year. Yeah, same with Capo Caco. Like he hasn't been the player that in the position that he's draft was drafted at. So Adam Fox is the MVP of that team. I don't care what anybody yeah. says. Um, yeah. That you know, I, I, that if there's any player on that team I'm jealous of. It's absolutely Fox. Oh, absolutely. I mean, that's what I just told him too. I'm like, the one thing they need is you know get another pillar to just get out there to put by Fox you know, get a veteran that he, you can put on his side so you can let Fox skate and be a dynamic defenseman the way he is. And mm. I, it's going to be scary. I think Alexi Lafreniere is a good example of they should have did with him what Vancouver did with Hughes and just not brought him up right away, especially in a season like this. Um, I just I, – I don't always agree with if you're taking first or second overall that you have to come into the NHL right away. Yeah. Uh, there was nothing wrong with him staying st- staying back in junior and, you know, you know pl- playing maybe for Team Canada one more time. Just, you know, just let him continue to develop. Their, like, what was the rush this season? And I think, it, I think in the long term it might, affect, it might affect him in his overall development because, I mean, I just don't see what you benefited out of Lafreniere playing this season uh, with the Rangers. No, absolutely. And I think, you know, part of it might have just been the the question marks about what's happening with junior hockey and like yeah, not playing a season and all that, but it is what it is. No, yeah. I agree. I agree. I mean, you you are right. I mean, I got there was not much no junior hockey this yeah, year. Look, no look, OHL this year. No no OHL. But I mean, look what the Buffalo look what Buffalo's done with with Jack Quinn. I mean, you just there's no reason for him to be playing in well, the NHL. The Q, that's the thing is the Q I think played, but like it's all limited. Like it's real weird, and weren't they like eliminating chucking? Like I don't, I don't even know. I don't, I don't know. There was it, that was supposed to happen in the OHL too. There was, uh, there was something that can be mandated by the by the country itself that they were like trying to eliminate all chucking out of junior hockey, which is just absurd if you ask me. It's always been like who's gonna who's gonna want to watch that. You're watching roller hockey essentially. Then at that point, you might as well just do a four on four and play roller hockey. Yeah. Um, what are you scouting? Yeah, exactly. You know, you, <laughs> um, but look again, Quentin Byfield. Quentin Byfield wasn't rushed into a position. He was, you know, again, he was projected to be this for a while. There, Quentin Byfield was projected to go first overall until Lafreniere really turned it on. And you know, they didn't rush him into a position he wasn't ready for. Um, and I, I, I was a big Quentin Byfield fan for most of the time, and then until he was a uh, I thought he. I, I personally thought he should have gone. Um, did, I don't think he went second overall, did he? I think he fell a few spots. Yeah. So. Third or fourth. Yeah, something like that. But anyways, I, that's all I got. Uh, I'll hang up and listen, guys, from me and Ty B. Uh, brought to you again by Outlet Liquor. Don't 
don't haste, go pick up a case. I think, is that the saying? I don't know. Is that the saying? Don't haste, go pick <laughs> up a case. That. Or did I just make that up? The place to buy a case. Oh, the place to buy a case. Don't haste, go pick up a case. Uh, I'm just, dude, they just might, might as well hire me. I don't care. Uh, and of course, uh, Amherst Ale House, make sure you go, um, you know, for all Sabres games, half off pitchers and medium pepperoni pizzas. Amherst Ale House has unbelievable food. Uh, you know, we will hang up and listen for me and Ty B. Let's go Sabres. <laughs>